Hey guys, it's Iguazi Tiruma again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hit subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to bring you another Magic Leap video. The video for today is going to be on hand meshing with Magic Leap latest version of the Earth Decay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you the demo that they provided. We're also going to be looking at the structure in Unity and we're going to be looking at the code and I'm going to explain the code to you so that it makes sense and you can actually implement it as well in your own project. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. And what hand meshing is, is basically creates a mesh of your hands in real time. Magic Leap used to provide just basically points on what they call key points on your hand to be able to track those points, but now they're basically creating a mesh in real time as you're basically looking at your hands when you're doing the experience. So this is the example that it's under, basically under Unity package. So if you go to Magic Leap and then look at, it, look at the examples, then go to Scenes, you're gonna see that they have various examples in here. I normally would be the one creating the examples. I normally don't use them, but honestly, this scene is so well, organized and prepared that I don't think I need to do a new one. So I'm gonna show you these and then we'll experiment with maybe new scenes in the future of, you know, using and interacting our hands with different things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, just give you a walkthrough on how this one is organized. So if you're curious, just go ahead and download it and basically just open up the hand machine scene. And that's what you're gonna see as soon as you open it up. So as soon as you open it up, you're gonna see various objects on the scene. You're gonna see that they have a sphere primitive and there's a couple of them. It looks like they're all kind of like in a square area. And they also have some walls, some, some walls on the on the far back and also on the left and also one on the right. And, and the reason why they have that is because they wanna test occlusion. So, and what is occlusion? And occlusion is basically in, in this sense is when you are, if you have your hand in front of these objects in real life, the object is not going to show because it's going to show part of it but if you're covering the object completely with your hand you're not going to see the object behind it so when you're using the the occlusion render mode it's actually going to act like real life it's basically going to occlude anything that is behind your hand so they have different basically different render modes and i'm going to show you what those are in the code in just a minute but just know that that's how it works the the other things that, that you need to know is that in order to basically to use this, you're going to have to use the OK hand key pose on your hand to, ba to basically toggle between poses. So make sure that you remember that. And when we go into the experience, I'm going to show you how we do it and how the experience works. And then there's also a delay of two seconds between render modes. That's just so that we don't cycle through those really fast. And I'll show you that in the code as well. And then these are some of the render modes that I show you that I told you that I was gonna show you in the code, they're actually listed right here. So there's occlusion, which hides objects behind your hands, like I explained it. And also flat, which shows your hand mesh. Wireframe, which shows your hand in a, basically in a wireframe. And then pause will basically stop updating the hand mesh. So if you have your, basically your hand wide open and you pause it, it's basically, even if you're closing your hand, it's gonna stay at the mode that it was before. And when and basically we have you know, switching to, and basically this is gonna be the mode that you're switching to, and then this one shows you, this label shows you the current the current render mode. So it's a fairly simple, basically simple setup because Magic Leap is doing most of the work behind the scenes. So let me go ahead and show you the hierarchy and then we ju we'll jump into the code. So some of the things in the, in the hierarchy, we have the content and rendering, that's a standard practice for the Magic Leap organization of their projects. You also have a hand meshing example, which is the one that I'm gonna walk you through. You also have a hand mesh. So this is a component that if you need to, basically if you need to use that in one of your projects, you're gonna have to create basically a game object. I believe they also have, uh, yeah, they do an ML hand meshing behavior. So I don't see this one as being, let me see, I don't think it's part of one of the prefabs, but if it is, you can basically, oh, looks like it is. So all you need to do is just drag it and drop it. But if you want to create it from scratch, all you need to do is just create a game object and then assign the ML hand meshing behavior. And then just keep in mind that you'll need a material 
and you also are going to need a mesh block prefab which is basically going to be the one that stores the mesh filter and that is going to have the actual mesh that gets created and also a mesh render so if you don't want to go through the headaches of creating it then you can just drag and drop that prefab into your scene which is the hand mesh and then you should be good to go so the other things that we have in here is the static objects so i show you we have a few quads which are the walls and then we also have a couple of primitive which are the spheres and then the tool tip is basically you know what we're switching to and then how many seconds it's going to take to switch to that new mode and then obviously everything that we see on the head pose canvas it's all in the head pose canvas right here which is what all the labels and all the ui components and then our main camera and our light so that's the setup as far as the you know the ui so let me show you where the code and, and what is what is the code actually doing which is actually fairly simple so some of the things that they have this is the hand machine example and some of the things that are available is a public enum so the public enum basically tells you you know if you're using a render mode of occlusion if you're using a flat render mode or if you're using a wireframe or for basically pausing the whole thing they also have tool tips for every one of the variables here in the inspector so obviously the ml hand machine behavior is the one that we just looked at that needs to be referenced because that's the one that is going to create the actual mesh and then this actually gives you options to determine what material to assign based on the mode on the render mode so if we have the occlusion render mode selected then this is the one that is going to show otherwise it'll show flat or wireframe and then i also show you that magically provided you with basically a delay to change between modes so if we're going from occlusion to flat it's going to be a delay of at least two seconds to do that and then we also have ml hand key pose the reason why they have this is because we're they're using the okay key pose to determine basically to detect when you want to change to a new mode so if you're doing the key pose of okay it's going to try it's going to change to the new mode then it's going to wait two seconds and then if you do it again it's going to you know it's going to go through that cycle and then we also have a status text also a switch tool tool tip and then the minimum confidence this is so that it knows if you're doing the okay key pose that it's 80 percent confident that that's the key pose that you're doing and then we also have a timer to determine when to switch to the new mode and then also the default render mode is going to be the occlusion and that's probably the one that i'm going to be using in most of my examples is the occlusion because is is what you know it's closer to real life and then on the on the start method they're validating the you know the properties are initialized basically everything that i just walk you through they're just making sure that you have associated those in the inspector then it looks at like the switch tooltip is set to inactive you know by default and then i would imagine that as soon as you try to switch to a new mode it's going to it's going to become enabled then the next thing that they do is they start the ml hands so they, this is so that we can start tracking key poses and basically all the hand tracking mechanism starts if for whatever reason we have an error we couldn't start it or maybe the privilege is not set correctly then you're obviously going to get an error but if everything is set up correctly they are filtering on a specific kipo which is the one that we set up above which was the okay they're also setting the kipos filter level it looks like it's set to extra robust by default there's also other options depending on you know how much performance you want to you know you want to have if you want to have good performance or you really you don't really care how, about how robust this is you can change it. i think there's other options in here and if we go in here there's a raw there's a robust and there's also an extra robust and it says more robust to flicker a higher latency cost of course and then also the keep the key points filter level they're also set to extra smooth so for the most part i really don't touch those so if they provide this as an example you know unless i really need to you know make sure that my game is is or, or your experience is not impacting performance then you have these other options to play with so let's go ahead and undo we'll leave it at extra smooth and then by default we set the timer to two seconds or whatever you set on the on the variables above and that's so that we can start recommending you know from that to the lower number and then they are checking to undestroy 
and then on destroy if the ML hands start it then we disable all key poses and then we stop the tracking on your hands then a couple more things in here that they're doing they're just checking to see that we're not switching mode so what this is doing is basically checking to see if you're currently trying to do an OK key pose. If you're trying to do an OK key pose, they are going to, you know, you're, they're not going to go into into the into actually switching to a new one. So if you're not switching, if you're not switching modes, then what they're going to do is they're going to set the timer, and then they also set the switch tooltip to basically to false, which is not active. But if you are switching key mo key modes in and let me say that again, render modes, that's what this is. So if we go in here and let's look at the, let's look at it. So they're looking to see that the key pose that we're doing right now is the okay key pose, meaning that we're gonna be setting, we're gonna be changing to a new render mode. If we are changing to a render mode, they are going to skip this if statement. So if we're not, they're gonna set the timer back to zero so that we have the delay of two seconds. But if we are switching, the timer is going to start and it's going to go, you know, two seconds to, until it hits zero. Once it hits zero, they're going to get the next render mode and they're going to apply that next render mode. So it's just basically a delay so that we don't change render modes like crazy and then we can't really see them. Then I show you this method is basically just checking to see that the key pose to switch is going to be at least 80% based on the property that we said above. This is a method to basically change the status, the status text. Current render mode, and then they basically show you the current the current render mode that is set. It looks like they're using HTML to set it to green a green color. And then this basically sets the new render mode. They're checking to see okay if the mode is passed, then we set it to then we set it to occlusion. Otherwise, we increment the mode by one. I actually haven't used this syntax ever before, so this is actually really cool to see. I have used enums, but never increment the enums like this so that's that's really interesting so as a side note sorry for the <laughs> for the side note but I, every time i look at code and and i learn new things i think that's that's the best time because i can learn how to do new things in a cooler way so the other thing that i wanted to show you is well this is the one to get the next render mode and then this one also updates the switch tooltip so this is going to basically tell you okay this is going to be switching to a specific mode in this amount of seconds and then this one right here if you notice let's go back up this is getting executed as you know right after we or seconds elapse so if the two seconds went by then we set the seconds between modes back to the original value we get the next render mode and then we update the hand meshing behavior which is going to be set by doing a switch statement that's how they did it and the way that they did it is they're basically just what this is doing is just changing the material on the behavior and the behavior in this case is going to be the ml component that i show you so that one it's going to be the hand mesh so this is the ml ml hand meshing behavior that is associated with the example so what they're doing is basically changing the mesh material and we could create any materials that we want in here and change change it however we want this happened to be the example they have. So for the occlusion material, if, we, if the render mo mode is occlusion, they enable the behavior. And the reason why they enable the behavior is because if it's paused, if the behavior is paused, they wanna make sure that this is back to normal, which is gonna be true. And then the mesh material gets associated based on the material that we set on the properties. So if we're, if we're doing a flat, we associate the flat material to the behavior. If we have wireframe, they use the wireframe material. And I'm sure that that wireframe material looks like a wireframe material. So if we go in here and we look at the some of the material, I'm gonna just click on wireframe. Look, looks like they have kind of like a yellow. Could actually just probably associate that with. No, that wasn't a good idea. But it's basically just a wireframe with yellow lines and a black background. That's what it looks like it is. And that's that's honestly all the code. I think you know most of the work it's happening on this component that we can't really we don't really have control of. Of course, we could go in and, and try to edit it. And we, if we try to edit it, looks like it didn't open it. Let me let me go in. Sometimes I have issues with opening a script. So let me go ahead and close those. And I think what I can do is click on edit. 
Okay, so if that doesn't open it, let's see if we can find it in here. Under, let's go into, make sure we go into Magic Leap, Scripts, and let me see if I can find the one that I have. So sometimes I just have to close out of VS Code. Let me open it up, and that should probably open, maybe not. The other way that I could do it, for some reason it's not opening the script, so I can open up, let's open up the one that we were looking at, which is the, not the meshing example, and let me go back, there we go, hand meshing example, and then what I can do here is I can just right click on it and then go to definition, yep, that should take me to it, for some reason it doesn't take me to it when I do that, it might be because it's basically metadata. So this is the component that Magic Leap is, is using, and I don't have access to it because it is part of that Lumin Unity DL. It's already compiled. But if you want to know, you know, what some of the things that they're doing, this is basically, and it says right here, utility class to generate the hand mesh and trigger callbacks based on the availability of the hand mesh. So this is what actually is creating the mesh and then sending that information back to back to other class with the mesh generated. So when I say they're doing the hard work, this is actually what's doing the hard work behind the scenes in that DL. All right, so that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you. So let me go ahead and get it built, and then we can look and see how it looks on the device. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this open, add this scene to the list of scenes that I have, and then make sure that everything is good here. I'll hit build and run, and then I can give it Magic Leap Essential. I think that's fine, and then hit save. And then as soon as I finish building and deploying to my device, I'll show you how it looks. All right, guys, so this finished building and I was able to get it pushed to my device. So let me show you how it works. So I'm going to hit play. And you can see that right now I'm looking at the wireframe mode. I'm also switching to a new mode by doing the OK key pose. And right now we're just using occlusion. So I'm occluding any objects that are in front of my hands. I'm also changing now to a new mode, which is the flat mode, and that's why you see my hands as being white. And it looks like it's also occluding things, it's just a different material. Now we're going back to wireframe. So this is basically what I wanted to show you as far as the hand meshing is concerned. I'm going to be doing more videos on hand meshing and also how we can do custom gestures. So thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I show you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me on Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.